do re mi fa so la ti do thoughts can i sing yes my name is stephen hall i got clean on july 13th 2018 so i'm just over four and a half years and my role is community relations manager my day-to-day -day role at Together We Can is managing the community relations team. A uh, big part of that is also creating, um, maintaining uh, relationships with outside organizations, uh, local people in the recovery community. Um, I also support the senior management and board of directors in the different campaigns or strategic planning that we have placed out. Um, so a lot of that surrounds fundraising, um, spreading awareness about TWC and the different programs that we offer like our medical clinic and, and our residential treatment as well as our family programming. Um, so a majority of my role is, is brand awareness and brand reach, really trying to let people know about uh, Together We Can and how we're helping the community and have been for the last 30 years. Mm, well, my addiction, I was, I actively used substances for about 15 years. Uh, my addiction really started to take hold when I was about 19 years old, uh, and that was, it was started with alcohol, mostly. Um, I battled with uh, many, using many different substances. Um, I tried to get sober when I was 24 years old and made it to just under a year and a half. Um, unfortunately, I relapsed, and that relapse, it was three years long. Um, it took me to some very dark places. Um, a lot of the reason why I, I decided to come to treatment actually, I was one of the lucky ones, you know, I wasn't homeless. Um, I was able to keep a job, you know, for the ma majority of my bills were paid. Um, but you know, it was the mental health. It was wanting to die every single day because I just didn't know how to get out of it. Um, I had no idea what a day clean and sober looked like. I couldn't figure it out on my own. And how does that contrast to where you're at now? Uh, it's a complete 180. Um, I wake up every single day, um, and not all, not all days are great days, right? But I can tell you there's a lot more good days than there are bad days or bad moments, right? Um, you know, I wake up today in my own home. I have, uh, my family trusts me. They, they want to be around me. Um, I have really good friendships. I have a great job. I'm surrounded by people in my workplace that are in recovery. We all support each other. You know, um, it's something as simple as I'm able to show up for my dog every single day. You know, she gets fed every single day. She gets a walk. She's taken care of, you know. It's those small things um, because prior to recovery, like, again, I couldn't, um, I couldn't stay clean for 20 minutes. And that was my drive all day long was to use substances and try and numb the pain, right? Um, today, I'm able to, uh, you know, manage my emotions and, and talk to people about what's going on for me and, and find solution instead of just overreacting and running from my problems. So the contrast is huge um, of my life in recovery versus um, what it was when I was actively using. Okay. What, keeps me, uh, what keeps me clean and sober today? Well, I'd have to say a big part of that is my friends, my support group, you know. Um, I'm part of the 12-step fellowship, so I have a sponsor. Um, I have a group of individuals in my life. We're all connected to each other. Um, but we can be real with each other. I can be vulnerable. I can trust them. Uh, I can talk about, you know, some of the things that I may feel like, hey, I'm going crazy here. And I, I can actually pick up the phone and, and there's so many people I could call today. So that's a big reason why I'm able to maintain my recovery. But there's also the inside work. You know, it's being honest with yourself, being self-aware. And when you notice that something's popping up that maybe you don't like, or, or maybe you're interacting with people in the wrong way, or you're acting out on emotions, it's having that self-awareness and um, humility to say, hey, okay, I need to make a change here. Um, so, you know, it's a lot of reflection that keeps me clean and sober, um, helping out in the community, helping the clients that together we can and, and people in the recovery community as well. Uh, I know what it was like to first come into recovery and it's scary, it's um, you know, a lot of unknown and, um, you know, there were people there for me. That helped me, that helped guide me through that and, and have gotten me to where I am today. So um, that's another way that I can keep clean and sober is by, by making sure I'm, I'm a part of the community and giving back to, uh, to the newcomers. Yeah, it's, uh, it's 
simple, but it's hard. Right? It's one of the simplest things you can do, but it's going to be the hardest thing that you ever do. Uh, don't overcomplicate things. You know, listen to the people who came before you. It's hard. You know, when we first come into recovery, um, I can speak for me. When I first came into recovery, I, I thought I knew exactly what I needed to do, even though I also knew I didn't know anything, you know? Um, so the best advice I have is to build that support group, you know, trust, get vulnerable, listen to the people that came before you that have, you know, years of clean time. Um, and just remember that, you know, we're all here to support each other. And that's what it comes down to is um, there's no reason to ever use again. You don't have to pick up. Um, some days it's going to feel like it, you know, but, uh, you know, you're going to wake up clean and sober the next day and be really grateful that you didn't use again. So, um, yeah, just stay connected and, and, uh, and reach out when you have a struggle, right? Um, helping somebody in their recovery, you know, I'm not going to get too specific. I think one of the best ways that I've helped a number of people is, again, picking up the phone. Um, I have a lot of people that reach out to me because of my job here at Together We Can um, and also who, um, being part of the recovery community. So on a daily basis, I, I get a lot of people that will reach out to me um, with their struggles or maybe they've relapsed and they're looking for somebody to talk to that's not judgmental. So I would say it's been a series of different um, situations um, and that's, that's how I think I've helped most is, again, being a responsible, trustworthy person. Um, so that when somebody's struggling or they're in a bad situation, um, they can get help. A memorable instance of somebody helping me in my recovery. Yes. Um, it was actually my first year of recovery. My mental health uh, declined rapidly and I became suicidal again. I, for some reason, didn't reach out to anybody. I was just letting it fester. And one of my friends actually sat me down and said, what's going on? And I told him. You know, I just, I just said, I'm suicidal again and I don't know what to do. I was about nine months clean. And, um, you know, he helped me um, make some choices and encouraged me to seek help from Together We Can, from my doctor, from my friends in the recovery community and my sponsor. Um, he was kind of my lifeline at that moment. And, you know, I attribute a lot of my success today and when I say success, I mean being able to manage and cope with my emotions to that moment. Because I learned in that moment that when I reach out, when I depend on my support, and when I trust the professionals in my life, uh, things can get better. You know, I don't have to sit in, um, in guilt and shame or suicidal ideation by myself. Um, those things are gonna happen, most likely for the rest of my life, but it's not something I need to be afraid of. It's just something I need to learn how to manage. And so, I would say that was probably around eight, nine months clean. Um, that was, that's probably been one of the most significant times in my recovery that somebody's reached out to me and one of the most significant uh, um, learning tools. In my spare time, outside of Together We Can, I own my own business, Elwin Marketing. Um, it's just a small project I do on the side, uh, which has really taken off actually. So I spend a, a bit of time doing that. Um, but uh, I like to spend time with my dog Nala and my partner. Um, we like to be in nature, um, you know, check out the different uh, venues and events and spaces here in Vancouver. I also spend a lot of time volunteering um, in the recovery community and, and again trying to give back and um, I do that through holding events and, um, and coordinating a couple of different groups. Um, before coming to treatment and getting into recovery, I don't feel like I had accomplished very much in my life. I was doing the bare minimum and, and surviving or existing. Um, since getting into recovery though, again, like I have accomplished so many different things. I have a, a successful business. Um, I have a fantastic relationship. I have a um, great relationship with my family again. I've been able to um, build a support group that is, uh, is really quite amazing and to me those are all accomplishments. I think one of the biggest accomplishments though is I get to be there for my siblings, um, you know, uh, when they're struggling and, and um, yeah, that's where I'm going to go with that.